code up an algorithm that implements the dot product, let's take a look at two different versions of the dot product operation. On the left hand side of the screen here, we see the dot product as defined mathematically. We start with two column vectors, x and y, both of which has m rows and one column. Then we define the dot product operation between these column vectors to be the scalar valued output x dot y, which is equal to x1 times y1 plus x2 times y2 plus da, 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 all the way to the end xm times ym. And we can write that as the sum going through the rows. So I'll use the index i. We go from the first row, then we multiply the entries in the first row x1 times y1. Then we go to the second row, the index updates plus x2 times y2 plus all the way to the end till we get to the mth row, which is xm times ym. Let's visualize what's happening here in this definition. When we start with column vectors x and y, each of which have m rows, we have these scalar valued entries, which are called the individual entries of x, and then the individual entries of y, and then the dot product takes the product, literally the multiplication between the scalars x1 and y1, and then adds that to the multiplication between the scalars x2 and y2, plus x3, y3, all the way till we get to the end xm, ym, meaning that indeed we have a scalar valued output. We can visualize this as putting both vectors right next to each other and then just multiplying the corresponding entries and summing those all up. That's the mathematical version of the dot product. If we look at the pseudocode version, over here is a pseudocode algorithm that actually implements that operation in MATLAB code. So what we do here is we initialize a scalar c, that's going to be the output of the dot product, and we initialize it as zero. Then we go from i goes from 1 to m, meaning i is going to go over the rows of our vectors, and we update c with c plus the product xi comma 1 times yi comma 1. The reason that we use the i comma 1 in both of these situations is because we started with column vectors. Could you guess what we might do if we started with row vectors? There is an operation called dot product between row vectors. Here's a challenge to you all. How would this algorithm change if we did dot products between row vectors? Now, that being said, we'll go ahead and implement this in MATLAB to study how this code works and what it produces. Here we are in MATLAB. I'm gonna go ahead and create a sandbox script file. So I've created a blank one. I'm gonna save this. And in this case, we're playing around with loops. So I'm gonna call this my engineering 11 lesson four sandbox. And in this case, I'm gonna say dot product algorithm. So we're literally gonna just test the dot product. Here, uh, we're gonna need two vectors. Right now, let's call them ones. Um, and perhaps we actually predetermine the size. So we say, let m equal six, that's a six by one vector. And we'll say that x is an m by one. And then we'll say the same thing for y. We'll let y be equal to ones m by one. And then why don't we uh, actually do one of these uh, two times one so that we're just adding a bunch of twos together. How many twos are we adding? We must be adding m of them. All right, so now what we wanna do is take the dot product between those. Of course, we have MATLAB's version of the dot product, which we could use the dot product function. So we can take x, y, and this gives us a sense of what this should be. Uh, right now, MATLAB's upset because I went to run this and I'm not in that folder, so I'm gonna go ahead and change folders. Check that out. So the constant output of the dot product produced by MATLAB's dot product function is 12. That makes sense. We have six entries. These are all ones, these are our two, all twos. What happens when we add two to itself six times? Well, we get 12. All right, so now what we wanna do is actually produce our own dot product, and we're gonna use the dot product mechanism here. So the first thing we do is we say C equal to zero, and then we go for I goes from one to M. Let's go ahead and end our for loop. And then what we're gonna do is use the assignment operator. We're gonna take the previous value of C and add the product. Uh, let's just go ahead and put I comma one times Y i comma one. So in each iteration, I'm gonna go back to the previous value of c, and then I'm gonna add the product of the current entries of x and y to the last value. So this right here is called initialize uh, output. So we initialize the output to be zero, which means in my first iteration, when I drop i equals one, I'm gonna overwrite c with a new value, and that's gonna be zero plus 
x1 times y1. Then I go to the next one. So now I've got x1 times y1 entered in C. Then I overwrite C with the next one, which is x2, y2, and I'm gonna add that to the previous value of C, but the previous value of C was x1 times y1. So at the end of my second iteration, I have x1 times y1 plus x2 times y2. Then I go to my third iteration. Here I have that previous two term sum, x1 times y1 plus x2 times y2. And then here I'm gonna add x3 times y3. And then I just keep, re keep repeating that until I get down to the nth value and C will hold that value inside. One of the nice things we can do to check our work is to run this. And then let's check the difference between C mat and C. Notice that they're the same thing. In other words, MATLAB's dot product function achieves the exact same results as this algorithm that we've done here. Community challenge for you all. What would happen if I change these from uh, column vectors to row vectors? How would the definition of the dot product change? Also, how would this algorithm change? Another one is, what if you wanted to code up an algorithm using MATLAB syntax that would work independent of whether or not these were uh, column vectors or row vectors? All right, that's how we code up this algorithm. We're gonna talk a lot about, as we get further into the course, the difference between an algorithm, pseudocode, and production code. So over here, this is, I would call it pseudocode. It's written in MATLAB syntax, but it's really just the idea of how to implement this. Over on the left-hand side, we have what we call an algorithm implemented in MATLAB code. This is not production level code. So I cannot, I would not recommend sharing this with other mathematicians who are gonna use it because there's no real uh, documentation. There's not a lot going on. It's just literally to get our head around it. That's why I called it a sandbox code. It's just literally figuring out what's going on with that algorithm. In lesson five of this, we're gonna actually turn these algorithms into production level code that will turn into a library of linear algebraic subprograms, which is kind of exciting. Thank you so much for your attention, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.